I hear you, baby. Because they are, you know what makes it bluer there? Because they are a long ways away from land, and you don't get your river water coming into you and mixing it with dirty water. It's beautiful water out there. Yeah, right now. Huh? Sunday Pretty came good. through on the TV okay. okay. Had a few pauses in it. Yeah. Had a few pauses. Yeah. yeah. That was you had a, had a nose ring one time. Yeah. A nose ring? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to have that. Kiss. That little ring. That little ring. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to have that camouflage. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was giving everybody a kiss. I was giving everybody a kiss. <laughs> yeah. I tried to get him to take a picture of that so we could show it to you when you got home. Oh, no. <laughs> well, it's uh, appreciate all your prayers. Everything went really well. We had a great time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's good to be able to get uh, take you and your family and <coughs> spend time. Amen. 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 God is worthy of all praise. Amen. We uh, had a great time in the Lord and was able to it, the people that I mentioned that was watching, they're actually from Winston Salem, and uh, and I mentioned that on our there, and then uh, met another couple from a family from Winston Salem, met a young guy from Greensboro, then there's this other family I met from uh, Fayetteville. We just had a good time in the Lord, and then we uh, sat down and as we, we prayed for our food, they were playing Yahtzee over here at this table. As we pray for our food, they say said amen with us, and the next thing you know, we started having a little little church there in the in the dining area. Mm -hmm. Amen. But it's uh, it's always good to to see other people, and everybody was having a good time. Some people were probably having too much fun. <laughs> amen. But, um, but you know, whenever whenever you go, and uh, I told that couple that I mentioned from Fayetteville, I said, no, I hope that from our church, whenever they go out, they broadcast the way they were uh, talking about the Lord. And that uh, it's so important that you don't know who you're going to touch and who you're going to reach. Right. Hey, Miss Bonnie. <laughs> mm -hmm. Brother Roger. I didn't get to see y'all. Willie and Sylvia, I didn't get to shake hands with y'all, but I'll get you after service. Amen. So I had the air condition blowing on me all the way home from uh, South Carolina. So that's why it sounds like I got a cough drop in my mouth. Mm -hmm. Amen. So uh, keep me in prayer for that. That's, uh, you know how annoying that is. I don't know if it was that or some allergies when I got back home. But when I went down there, my, I ran with the air conditioner on, so I sort of had some of that 
uh, felt like I was gonna have a scratchy throat, fine all the, throughout the whole cell. And then I run the air conditioner on my face all the way home and then here we are. <clears throat> Amen, but let's open up our Bibles, if you would, to the book of Judges. We're going to start uh, and probably finish tonight uh, if everything goes smooth, I'm not going to hold you all night. Amen. But I want to still seek him by name, Jehovah Shalom, which is the Lord is peace. That's Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. How many of you need peace in your life? Amen. <coughs> I tell you, whenever you, uh, you don't know you need peace till you, you go through a storm. Amen. You go through something difficult. Yeah. You say, I think I need peace. Would you give me a clean one? Judges 1. It's Judges chapter 6. You <laughs> got that? I Thank you. <laughs> Judges chapter 6. If you'll look at verse 21, you can mark it in your Bible, verse 21 to 24. Says, then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh of the unleavened cakes. And there rose up fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for well, because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee. Fear not, thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built an altar unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet in Oprah and in Abizrite. So peace, uh, here, this peace has just above us in verse 23 in Hebrew is Shalom. And it's talking about the peace. And when we see the peace, it's talking about being well, happy, health, and prosperity, peace. So if you've ever watched some type of Jewish movie and you hear them say shalom, it's, it's wishing them all of those, wishing them peace, uh, happiness, wellness, <clears throat> prosperity, and health. In Spanish, it's uh, salute, like S-A-L-U-T-E. Amen? And so when you... Uh, Manda saludos, or U-D-E, is that right? Saludos? You don't know? S U L U D A. S A L U D. Yeah. O S, or A S. Anyway, saludos, the salute is the same uh, when you manda saludos. To my family, it's the same thing as saying shalom. It's the same thing as saying wellness and peace and good health. And you see, when people would toast, they say salute. And that's wishing wishing someone well. And that word shalom was something that was very popular in, uh, in Jewish custom. But we see here that it's so important whenever you think about, when you look out through the, the Old Testament and you see the word peace. Not every word peace means shalom. Amen? But here we're going to talk about Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, and I'll be backing up to, again to the book of Psalms, so go ahead and turn over to Isaiah. So Gideon, whenever he had experienced this encounter with the angel of the Lord, he perceived that it was an angel of the Lord. So therefore, the Lord has spoken unto him and says, Peace be unto thee. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to build up to this because we get to the New Testament and we talk about how Jesus is the, the Prince of Peace. Then you're going to start realizing that peace is there with you all the time. <clears throat> you, know? Mm -hmm. you know, you got peace, you got health, you got strength, you got Jesus Christ, all these names of the Lord that we've mentioned already, they're all with you all the time. But you don't always recognize it. 
So until you recognize that, it's like you don't have him. Does that make sense? So whenever you get saved and you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you say, okay, I know I'm saved. Then throughout life, until you grow in the Lord and you grow in knowledge and wisdom and you're experienced by reading and hearing the word of God, you don't always know that he's also my healer. He's also my provider. He's also my righteousness, my health, and my strength. But here in Isaiah chapter 9, this is a very popular verse of Scripture. In verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Who are we talking about? Jesus. We're talking about Jesus. Amen? And so when you look at that, you look at all these names that it sort of wraps up in the one. And sometimes we've overlooked it many times in our life and in our relationship with the Lord when we say that he shall be called, <coughs> excuse me, wonderful counselor, the mighty God. We can say he's the son of God, but very few times do we say that he's God. Amen? Because we all, we heard in church all this time, because when Jesus says, you know, in the Bible talking about him being the son of God, that's, he's the flesh of God. He's Emmanuel. <coughs> Excuse me, God's with us. But the mighty God, the everlasting Father, here he's even called the Father. <clears throat> if all these names are talking about Jesus because it didn't split up, he's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all rolled in one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? It's not the same way we think of three in one of man. Man Man thinks that he understands the full deity and trinity of God. And I stand here before you and say, God is bigger than I am. He's, built, he's bigger than my knowledge is able to attain. Amen. But I know what he is to me. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So whenever you know, <clears throat> excuse me, what he is to you, <clears throat> and that's what, that's what all this is about, you don't have to have the same God that I have. You need to have the God that you have. Amen. Amen. You need to know the Lord Jesus as your peace, as your Savior, as your strength, as your provider. Amen. Amen. You know him. I can know him, but I can preach him. But just because I preach him doesn't mean you have him. Amen. you got to have that own personal relationship. The same way with me and my family. If I know that I, what I have in the Lord, they can't get to heaven because of me. Amen? Mm -hmm. They have to have that own personal relationship with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's back up to Book of Psalms 34. And I want to read a couple out of Book of Psalms, and then we'll get over to our New Testament. Psalms 34, 14. Now, this Prince of Peace was also Shalom. That's the same peace. All right? So here in the book of Psalm 34, 14, the scripture says, Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. What are you pursuing? Peace. Pursuing peace. So what is peace? The peace is the Lord. But it's all this shalom because I told you shalom. So you're going to seek prosperity. You're going to seek health, happiness, wellness. Amen? You're seeking that. But who is that? You've already answered it. Jesus. Jesus because he's the prince of peace. He is peace. But see, whenever you're... It's okay whenever you're going to school to get that uh, degree and you're trying to get a career. and you're, We all wanted to make more money, right? It's okay to want to make more money, but not to want to want just the money. The prosperity is okay. In fact, God wants you to prosper. As long as you prosper in the right sequence. Amen? Amen. Putting him first. <laughs> we think about it a little bit of, of famous people or rich people. Some of you might be rich. You know? In fact, 
<clears throat> you are all rich. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. As long as you say I'm not limited by how much is in my bank account. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because as you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you have him. Mm -hmm. Amen. And with him there is no limit. But there's rich people that they're limited by their billions or ever how many dollars they have. But sometimes that billions of dollars they have can't buy their health. Amen. Many of them have died of certain diseases and had car accidents and <clears throat> drug overdoses, suicides, different things. So the money is not the, the problem. Amen. But this peace that we're talking about, we're talking about Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. So let me look at this four, verse 14 again, Psalm 34, 14. <clears throat> Depart from evil. So that means you've got to turn, turn away. That's repentance, isn't it? Mm -hmm. When you turn away from evil, you turn away from sin. That's repentance. And do good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not saved by works. You're saved by grace. But without works, faith is dead. Amen. Amen. It says do good and seek peace. You're going to see seeking peace in just a moment when we get over here to the New Testament. Psalm 37. <coughs> Psalm 37, verse 9. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be not be. Yea, Thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Now this isn't just peace, this is abundance of peace. That means there's no excuse for you and I to walk around stressed and depressed. When you see a Christian that is walking around with stress, and we've done it, right? depressed, sad, anxious, then we didn't get this revelation of peace. Amen? Amen. We sort of skipped out and we don't focus on this. But you got to learn how to do that whenever you're going through things in your life. Whenever you got a, a, a sickness, then you're seeking who? Jehovah Rapha, right? right? He's the Lord, our healer, right? He's our health. He's our strength. Said, Lord, you're my health, you're my strength. I had this this little nagging cough today, and I thought, Lord, I need peace. You know, I went through cough drops, and the cough drops I had in my desk, they were a couple years old, I think. I had to peel off, so I had more paper <laughs> in my mouth than I did cough drops. Amen. Luckily, I got some at home, and they the paper comes off of those. <laughs> But I, pray, I was praying throughout the day, Lord, and, and, and through here we've seen this about being our, our health and our strength and our peace. So, Lord, you're my health, you're my strength. Amen. You know, help me make it through this day. Amen. And you focus on him and you make it. Now, do I still have a cough? Yeah. Did I struggle through the day? I sure did. But he made me and he helped me through the day. So, see, you're still going to go through things in your life. But who you call on, who you put, put priority. Amen? Amen? But he's the abundance of peace. And that's why we wanted to talk about these names here in the church, because I want you to have a, an abundance of peace, an abundance of health, an abundance of joy, an abundance of righteousness. Amen. And even as this peace mentions, an abundance of prosperity. I want you to be happy. There's no reason for a Christian person to be unhappy. <clears throat> but it happens, don't it? Sometimes <clears throat> we know by some of us, excuse me, some of our testimonies is that Sometimes it's not always happy at home. Right? But we got to work on that. 
we got to, when we see that, that stuff starting to stir up, we got to, how, how they say it? <clears throat> Nip it in the bud. <laughs> Amen. You got to put a stop to it. Sometimes with me, when I'm having a bad day, I want to be left alone. <clears throat> Let me just go over here and you know, I'll be quiet. That way, because you start poking the bear, I'm going to end up saying, saying something that's hurting your feelings or that I don't need to say. Right? So I try to go and shut up and be quiet. Amen. Amen. Riding around me this week. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, we all look at this and we all have these things in our life that we have to face and understand Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. Amen. He is peace. So I want to talk to you a little bit in the New Testament. And the word I'm going to use from that is translated in the New Testament is a Greek word. And it's actually Irene. But it's E-I-R-E-N-E. -E. Amen. But we knew that Irene's name, when we looked her name up, her name means peace. But it's translated and all these scriptures I'm going to share with you tonight that talks about peace is actually our saying Irene. Amen. Amen. Maybe me peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> all but this one. And this is a one that is very popular that we've heard when Jesus says, when he rebuked the wind and said, Peace, be still. Now that peace was a different word. It wasn't Irene. I mean, that word was, I don't know if I can say it, but I can spell it. S-I-O-P-A-O. -O, and the O's are, are have a line over them. So C-O-P-A-O. And really what that's talking about is to be silent. It's almost like saying, shut up. Amen. But it was peace. So you think of this, Jesus looking at this storm, saying, shut up! Amen? The word he spoke to it was peace. He said peace, but it meant to be still, to be silent, to hold one's peace. That's what that particular word means. <coughs> and so whenever you look at that, it's more of an action or a verb. When Jesus spoke to him, he spoke to the storm. Now, what I encourage you in your problems, in your situations, if it's your loved one, don't tell them to shut up. <laughs> Say, the pastor told me to tell you to shut up. <coughs> I mean, that's not the way I'm talking about addressing this. Amen. <laughs> because we've got to look at it when we look at ourselves and say, self. Shut up. Amen. So you got to know how to control you. Sometimes you try to control others, right? You can't control others, but you can control you. And if you can control yourself, your self-discipline that you have will rub off on other people. Amen. When we was on the cruise, we passed a uh, man, he looked older than me. Bigger man, he probably in his mid sixties, had a bloody chin, and he had had a confrontation with a young man. Security, security was questioning things. Well, he had a drink in one hand, and he's talking about this guy coming up behind him, like that. Well, first way to avoid that type of situation is don't be in those places. That's right. Right. So we weren't in those places. So I didn't see any, any of that going on. All I saw was people having fun. Amen? Mm -hmm. But there's always somebody that wants to take away your peace. Amen. You're there to have a good time. You're there to go to the park, go driving down the road, go to the beach. But there's always somebody mm -hmm. that's not happy unless they're causing trouble. <clears throat> yeah. Amen? Amen. <coughs> 
John chapter 20, excuse me, verse 19. <coughs> John chapter 20, verse 19. Let me turn over there too. I had it typed out, but I want to make sure I'm reading it. Right. John 20, 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, when the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Now, he's saying shalom. Now, I've got to start breaking this up a little bit. I want to go ahead and one of our favorite scriptures, Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Right? So you make sure you have that marked in your Bibles because this talking about uh, the kingdom, his characteristics of the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. So then from Matthew 6, 33, I want you to look at Romans chapter 14, <clears throat> verse 17. Romans 14, verse 17. And if you're interested, I'll give you these scripture at the end of the service and make sure you have them. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So as the Lord Jesus was talking about to seek the kingdom, in the Old Testament, in the book of Psalms, it said to seek peace. Right? Jesus identifies the peace and says, seek the kingdom. We learn by Apostle Paul in, in Romans 14, verse 17. For well, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. This peace is our reign. Amen. <clears throat> so, we get to this part where just before verse 17, some were saying they couldn't eat this, they couldn't eat that, they couldn't drink this and couldn't drink that. And Paul is trying to break it down and says, you're, you're trying to put too much in to, to, your relations, to your relationship. The relationship with God is not a tangible. It's a spiritual. Righteousness is spirit, peace is spirit, and joy is spirit. Jesus says, to worship God, you got to worship Him how? In the spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. He said, God is a spirit, and those that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Now, as we worship Him in spirit and in truth, and we begin to develop the kingdom of God, and we understand we build this kingdom inside of us, then we're going to do those good works that we talked about just a few minutes ago. Now, in the book of Luke, Chapter 17, verse 21 and 22. Book of Luke 17, verse 21 and 22. Let me turn over there. I actually want to read verse 20 and to 22. And when he was de demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. They wanted to see his physical kingdom descending from heaven. We're going to see this new city descend one day. Amen? But that's not what Jesus is talking about, this kingdom. <laughs> he said, neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Amen. In this is translated in your midst. So within you, he's trying to tell them the kingdom of God is right here in front of you. Amen. So when you apply these, and I've, I've already preached this sermon once, haven't I? But when you look at Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What, all the prosperity, all the health, everything you stand in need of, you got to get your priorities, seek first the kingdom of God. If you need to seek something first, it's got to be the kingdom of God. Amen. 
Then we always jump over to Romans 14. It says uh, that the, the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Righteousness, peace, and joy. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. Jesus says over in Luke 17 that the kingdom of God is within you. Now, the revelation you need to get out of that is that I'm the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in me. If the kingdom of God dwells in me, Jesus lives in me. If Jesus lives in me, then the kingdom of God lives in me. If the kingdom of God is in me, that means I have righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So there's no reason for me to go around grumpy and sad, you know, when I'm in the spirit. Flesh, you get grumpy, you get mad, and all those other things. So when you find yourself in those, you say, I need to get, put myself in check. I need to get in the right, the right mind. I got to start focusing like it teaches in Philippians. <clears throat> but Jesus says, the kingdom of God is within you. Now, whenever I put this together with Jehovah Shalom, is that that saying that Shalom, Jehovah Shalom lives inside of me. Amen. Amen. So whenever the time starts, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> time starts to get difficult or hectic at work or hectic at home, you have to say, peace, be still. Amen. Amen. You've seen the movies, Woosa, <laughs> right? <laughs> Amen. Now, we're not calling Musa, we're calling on Jesus, right? Amen. We got it, son. Hmm. You know, sometimes, hmm, I'll, I'll go through the house. Mm. <laughs> now, I probably got that from my dad. My dad, when he was standing at the house, he'd walk through the house, hmm, 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 grunting the whole time, <laughs> all the way down the hall. Amen. <laughs> if you listen to him when he's walking up through here, you might hear him grunt. Amen. <laughs> Like probably doing one of the grunt calls when you're out calling in a deer. <laughs> but you know, sometimes, uh, any of you do that? You have some way of exhausting that uh, frustration? <clears throat> any of you do that? I do. You know, if, if something, something's really bothering you, you know you need to keep your mouth shut, you <clears throat> You ever do that? Yeah. You got to find a way to do it to release those. <laughs> you got a way to have a way to release that frustration and let the peace be released inside your spirit. Amen. <laughs> Some people sing. Some people sing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Acts chapter 10, verse 36. The word of the word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. <laughs> so we know that whenever he has his disciples preaching, they're to preach peace. Amen. Now, we look at this, all Christians, all of us believers, should go about seeking peace. Amen. Whenever I sent, spent the time in the military, military taught you to fight. Right? The purpose of fighting was to keep peace. Supposedly, that's what you go in there saying, I'm going to fight for the country so that our country can be peaceful. So that the war is always somewhere else and not in our country. For the biggest part, that works for the United States. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. It has had some things through terrorism and stuff occur, but it's been a long time since we actually had a war on our land. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> I mentioned this scripture a moment ago in Philippians chapter 4. Let's turn over there. Philippians chapter 4. <coughs> Start 
starting at verse 6. Be careful for nothing but in everything by, pr by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Amen. So be careful for nothing. Now I've got the, the King James Version Bible. Does anybody have an NIV? Or New King James? Anybody says to be anxious for nothing? Some translations say be anxious for nothing. Instead of that, be careful for nothing. That means don't get don't be frustrated over anything. Don't let anything stir you up. <laughs> That's what it says. Amen. <clears throat> but in everything, through prayer and supplication. So it the scripture is there to give us instruction. When you start getting that worked up, you gotta start praying. You gotta start. Mm. Let me go over here in the corner a minute. You know, let me go over here and spend some time, me time with me and Jesus, you know. Let me go over here and just cool off. <clears throat> with thanksgiving. So the frustration can't, it's not only between like an individual, it could be circumstances. It could be a doctor's report. Amen. It could be you get, you, who, I'm not going to, I'm going to mention that. I, it's not a question. If you get caught up in all these conspiracy things, <laughs> man, as I'll tell you, people get caught up on these conspiracy things. It'll get you anxious. It'll make you uh, question everything, make you insecure about who you are and what country you live in and all these other things. Amen? The way Jeff handles that is that I live my life. Amen? I live my life, I preach Jesus, and Jesus is going to take care of everything. Mm -hmm. Amen? The Lord is in control, and you don't let nothing happen unless it's his plan. And what God don't stop, my Glock will. <laughs> <laughs> That's wrong, wasn't it, from the preacher? <laughs> yeah. But you know what I'm talking about, right? You, you said that you're going to be peaceful, you're going to have peace. Uh, <laughs> but in verse 7 and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus now this is talking about peace <clears throat> shalom, I mean not shalom but irene amen Irene. so we want to have this, this peace that's going to come in and calm my nerves calm my mind, get my mind to focus on the right things amen, and that's what it's talking about and the peace of God the irene of God Amen. And the uh, and Irene, let me tell you what it. Let me break it down. What Irene? Where are you at, Irene? <clears throat> where are you at, Irene? I got you over here. Prosperity, peace, quietness, rest. Amen. Very similar to the definition of shalom. So you look at this as, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Because we don't all we don't understand. But God's peace passes all of our understanding. But we try to put a definition on it, we try to control it, right? But when you yield to it and allow the peace of God to take control, then you start finding that I'm in peace. Amen. So you, whatever doctor's reports, you can't control doctor's reports. Amen? But you can pray. Amen? Now, if you accept the doctor's report, bad news, for the news, I want to tell you, this is the news. Amen. This is not only the news, but it's the good news. That's right. And it's the gospel, which is the good news. And the Bible tells me to preach the gospel, the good news. So you might go get some bad news from the doctor, but what the doctor gives you, I got the good news. And then the good news that's inside you, which is the, the Jehovah Shalom we're talking about, that's where this prosperity, this peace, this healing, these names of Jesus that we're talking about, all these names of God that's inside you, you can sit here and say, I'm starting to get it, I'm starting to see I'm developing this love and relationship with Jesus Christ. When you started 
You know, I was saved a long time before I knew how to have a relationship with Jesus. I was preaching before I knew how to have a relationship with Jesus. Now, when I started pastoring, I knew how to have a relationship with Jesus. That's whenever the Lord said, now it's time. All this other time, I could have been pastoring, but I couldn't because I didn't really know how to tell people how to have a relationship. You can teach people and tell people how to be saved. But how do you get somebody to fall in love with Jesus? Falling in love with the Lord is not singing, oh, how I love Jesus. Through his word. Amen. What's that, honey? Getting in love with him through his word. Through his love, word, right. So you start finding and you, you see who he is in his word. He says, peace, I love peace. Peace makes me feel good. Peace calms me down. Verse 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, a good report. That's what I just said, right? That's the good news. A good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Doctor's report gives you a bad report. And you sit here and you start worrying about, you're thinking about that, or you see this conspiracy theory, or you see you watch too much bad news on TV, and you, you get all worked up, you start, it can affect your health. Mm -hmm. Right? You start thinking negative, finally negative is going to come in and start and that affecting blood pressure you. goes straight on it. Blood <laughs> pressure, right? Different things. Yeah. You, you'd be amazed how many spiritual things, negative spiritual things, causes physical sickness in your body. So one way for us to get healed of a lot of the things we're going through is developing this relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Knowing how to call on him. But look how this finishes up in verse 9. Paul says this, those things that you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. Do them. Do what what I'm telling you about praying, pray. About thinking on the right things, think on those things. Do those things. <clears throat> and the God of peace will be with you. First, it was the peace of God. It's one thing having the peace of God. Then it's another thing to have the God of that peace. Now, if you look at all this, do I want what God has to offer or do I want God? Right. We want God, right? So this, this is the key. This is the map right here. He talks about to, to think on the right things, start doing the right things. Then the God of that peace that you've been seeking, the God of that kingdom, He's going to be there. I mean, how's he said? The God of peace shall be with you. The God of prosperity, the God of health, the God of well-being, the God of feeling good and joyful. He's going to be there. So saints, whenever you're going through those difficult times that we all do, if you'll be honest and you evaluate it, it's because you let your mind drift in the flesh. You start thinking about situations and circumstances. There was not a Jonah on the boat. <laughs> it was nice and peaceful. <clears throat> we went to a, a comedy thing and there was a little boy's name who was Noah. Mm -hmm. And I was waiting for somebody else to be in there, Jonah, and I was going to leave that show. <laughs> right. But no Jonah. There wasn't a Jonah there. <coughs> so this family had two children. The one was Noah. They said, well, what's your name? <clears throat> Hoyt. Said, that name's not in the book. <laughs> <laughs> He looks at the mom and says, you just went completely out of the book. Yeah. 
But you know, it's a. Uh, but you can go and. I didn't know what to expect on a cruise. Have any of you been on a cruise? Okay, so you know what to expect. I didn't know what to expect. <coughs> so my expectations were down here. <laughs> right? I didn't know I was, I was going, I was intending to go have a good time and do what I was supposed to do. And the Lord blessed and everything worked out. Jeffrey beat me every time we played chess. <laughs> is a uh, how do you learn how to play chess? I didn't know you played chess. I play online. He plays <laughs> online. I think he plays online. <laughs> the one time he beat me was within five minutes. The first game. <laughs> like, we was playing, and two Chinese boys walks up. If anybody knows how to play chess, it's Chinese, right? Seems like every time you see a champion, they're Chinese. Mm -hmm. They walk up and they're watching us play. They said, he's going to win. <laughs> Pointing at Jeff. He's going to win. They <laughs> well, right after that, now this is part of the sermon. <clears throat> so I get his queen. When I got his queen, I said, I got him now. <laughs> right. So I'm sitting here moving around trying to get over here to set up to get his king where well, he gets his pawn who, who plays chess in here so he gets his pawn in there next thing you know he's got his queen back <laughs> within just two moves he had me in checkmate <laughs> man but it, it was fun it, it, it's uh so we went with expectations and having a, a a calm mind not looking for trouble you know I took some drama mean the first day. I was when I was on ship in the Marines. I, I didn't do good on the ship, so I didn't know how I was going to do on a cruise. So I, was, so I took drama mean, but anyway, I, I was focused. Okay, I'm going to have a good time. Lord, you allowed us to to have this trip and to have family time. And my biggest concern is walking around. Where am I going to be able to have church service when Sunday comes around? So the Lord is our peace. He's what you stand in need of. When you got things stirring up, you got to, it's time to calm down. Amen. The hard part, probably, Brother Greg, is when you're in charge in a group of guys. And the same way when I was in the military. You try to be peaceful, but sometimes you got to get a little firm. boisterous. Yeah, firm. That's a good word. Firm because they'll, you have the authority. <laughs> Amen? And when you're in a position of authority, you got to be in control. Amen. Right? <clears throat> God has put each one of us in a position of authority in our relationship with him. And in our personal relationship in our home. When I say an authority, it's between you and the devil is what I mean. In Jesus' name, you have authority over the devil. So learning how to be firm toward him. Not on your own, but in Jesus' name. You got to be careful because you're no match for the devil on your own. But in Christ Jesus. Amen. Whatever you're going through, spiritual warfare, whatever you go through, it's got to be in Jesus' name. Amen. And that's getting to the point of when, when you got to tell those evil spirits to get out of your house. And then you got to have you got to have the the assurance and the confidence of who Jesus is in you, right? Because if you don't have the confidence, you're going to be just like those other guys that try to cast out devils. And they say, you know, this Jesus that Paul talked about and the other ones talked about, <coughs> the devil said, Jesus we know and Paul we know, but who are you? You need to know who you are in Jesus. So allow this peace, Jehovah Shalom, or... Irene said, I, I was 
I was blessed I married Irene. <laughs> right? So I was able to keep peace in the house. <laughs> Don't always work that way. But we try. Would you stand as we get ready to pray? Those that are watching on uh, social media or may watch later <coughs> on uh, YouTube and you guys, it's, it's important that you apply this scripture <clears throat> that we go through on Wednesday nights and then apply it to your life. And the same way as me, is with this discomfort that I feel and with this cough that I'm trying to hold back, is I got to keep praying it out. Right? <clears throat> so I'll take whatever medicines I got in the cabinet and pray for Jehovah Rapha, you know, to heal. And this is just one of those things that you have allergies. So I'll, sometimes you take an allergy pill and the sinuses stop. And, <laughs> right? <clears throat> but everything I do, I do it for in the name of Jesus. Now that's not to brag on me, it's just saying. Everything you do should go through him. Don't try to do things on your own power. Amen. But I, I did miss you guys Sunday. Mm -hmm. The good thing, with, and I tried to show the ocean <clears throat> how peaceful it was. And then you go to the beach, you see the big waves. Yeah. Right? And sort of, and I was, I was glad it wasn't any big waves. <laughs> It's all nice and calm. Mm -hmm. But thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. so I mentioned this in the sermon on the boat. Everybody don't like to go to the beach or to the mountains. Some people just like to stay home. And if that's where you like to stay home, God wants you to be happy at home. Mm -hmm. He wants you to be able to enjoy your family time and go places. But if you just enjoy being home, then just stay home. If your wife wants to go places and you want to stay home, let your wife go places while you stay home. <laughs> Amen. But I, what would be nice, <laughs> we see some families doing some family outings. It said, uh, Faust Cruise, you know, family cruise or something like that but we need to do something as, a, as our church I know we've got a list of things that we've talked about wanting to do to go and see the Noah's Ark and different things mm -hmm. uh, but you know that's what we need to do mm -hmm. and uh, so maybe sometime next year we'll plan that on our church our church <clears throat> outing so Saturday we got ice cream Ooh. I've okay. ate so much ice cream <laughs> in the last four days. I forced myself to eat some, but I bet I stopped at that ice cream machine four or five times a day. <laughs> it was good. It was good ice cream. So we're going to have some variations, some homemade. Some of you, if you know how to make homemade, bring some homemade. We're going to make some homemade, and, uh, and then we'll bring some Neapolitan. we got some different things we're going to have. Celebrate birthdays. <clears throat> so we'll have some cake and eat it too. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. coughs> when me and my wife first got married, I said, You can't have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> she said, Why you want cake if you can't eat it? <laughs> I said, You know, I don't know why we ever started that in the United States to say that. I mean, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> and, and that's the truth. Why you want cake if you can't eat it? <laughs> So I, don't, I want my cake and I want to eat it too. <laughs> so uh, perhaps we can bring some games or something and uh, have a chance to do just have some fellowship. So let's just have, plan to have a good time. And then uh, we'll pass on further announcements later. Amen. Well, before we pray, I'm going to first uh, pray for Donnie Roberts. She fell and broke her left hip uh, that God's will will be done in her life. She's 93. She's ready to go. She's been a Christian all her life. She's worked for the Lord <coughs> served him. And she has another rest to take things. So uh, let's just pray for her. 
Dottie, um, what's her last name? Roberts, Dottie Roberts. <clears throat> she ever met a soldier for the Lord, she was, she, she was one, or is one. Well, what made me, you reminded me of something I wanted to make sure I shared tonight. I wanted to start it off, but I didn't make a note of it. But live in peace. Mm -hmm. When somebody passes, you know how they say, rest in peace? It's too late to tell somebody to rest in peace. Amen. You teach somebody to live in peace, and then they can rest in peace. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, when she mentioned that about Dottie, is that when it's our time, I want to go peaceful. I don't know about you. I just, I just want to wake up in his presence when it's that time. Amen. 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 I want it to be peaceful. <clears throat> so we want to, we will want to pray for her. Mm -hmm. uh, this boy, I, I, young, this man that I told you, Daniel, he got bit by one of those brown, what do you call them? Recluse. 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 So his, his hand's all swollen up. He sent me a picture of that. And uh, he said he can't play his guitar right now. He said but he's going to get back to practicing as soon as it, he can, but pray for him. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now, I don't. I don't think otherwise. All oh, this is okay, but this is uh, not doing good. And he didn't go to his follow-up appointment for the doctor. cancer in his knee mm -hmm. because he said he was already feeling good. He didn't need to go here to the doctor. The doctor last time he went to the doctor said there was nothing they could do for him, and that's when I told you he put his cane aside and started remodeling his house. Mm -hmm. Amen following us on, on uh, YouTube and get developing his relationship with the Lord and nurturing that, uh, then you got to have somebody sort of nudge you, right? But then you can develop that relationship in the Lord. Amen. So let's keep him in prayer. Anybody else? I know our regular list, we got a list of things. In my family in Texas, I'm praying. <coughs> family in Texas. In our church. Our church, we got to start visiting. And then, so, uh, I got the stamp. I'm going to get, then I got a few tracks already. Then I'm going to put the church information on these tracks. I'll put them here at the front so you can pass some out uh, to win people to the Lord. If you don't know how to say something, you can hand them a track. Right. I had somebody hand me one this week, and I shared it with my wife. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have those tools for you to, to share, because that's what you're supposed to do, share the good news. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Perhaps just uplifted hand. <coughs> they says, I need peace. I need peace. peace. Yeah. Now, did you guys do all that repeating I said to repeat when I was, look to this neighbor and that neighbor? Was y'all doing yeah. it? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So, they, did they wake you up? She wake you up? Okay. All right, I just want to make sure I can see it. I can see you doing it. Uh, I said, look at this neighbor. Look at that neighbor. And I can see the girls. They ain't going to hold me back. Yeah. They ain't going to hold me back. I ain't going to let mom and daddy hold me out. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading and hearing of your word today. We pray, Father God, that as we studied and we learned more about your name of Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. Lord, we thank you that you are our peace and you're the peace that lives within us. And you are the Prince of Peace. <coughs> we pray, Father God, for these uh, prayer requests that was lifted up here today. Father God, for Dottie, Lord, we, we pray, Father God, that when it's any of our times, that it's a peaceful time. But Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would give her strength and help. We pray for her to be able to recover from this, this fall. And we pray, Father God, that whatever she has left to, to serve you with, that you give her the strength to do so. Lord, we pray for the, the church. <coughs> Excuse me, Lord. We pray for the church that you would help us, Lord, as we go out to be witnesses that you can help us live that relationship with you and help us to teach others about having a relationship with you. And Father God, that you would help this church to grow spiritually, physically, and financially. We pray, Father God, that you would bless each one here, that they will have peace in their homes. Father God, that they would be able to uh, speak to the peace in the times of trouble. There's a peace, be still. 
And we pray, Father God, even this cough, in Jesus' name, I pray, Father, that you would take this uh, this tingling out of my out of my chest. Father God, and help me to, to recover and to, to be full and be whole in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, Father God, for the whole congregation, that each one of us that goes through our, our troubles and trials, that I pray, Father God, for your name to be above all those situations and circumstances. We lift up Daniel, that you would touch him and his family. I pray for this uh, spider bite. Lord, may you allow the infection to exit his body in Jesus' name. And may you allow the swelling to go down and his hand to be uh, become healed. <coughs> we ask you, Lord, to help this church to continue to be hungry and thirsty after righteousness, to desire a closer walk with you. As your word told us tonight, <coughs> to seek peace to seek first the kingdom of God and to seek you so Lord we want you in our life as our king of kings and our lord of lords may you go with us as we go our separate ways keep us all safe and we'll be careful to give you the praise the honor and the glory in Jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. amen.